Honourable uh, Gareth Hughes. Kia ora, Mr Chair. Namahinui kia koutou. Kia ora. You really know what grinds my gears, Mr Speaker? It's that minister talking about, and I quote him, openness, transparency, we're having a conversation. A conversation after the thing's been negotiated. A conversation and openness and transparency after the thing's been decided. That minister came down to this house and said, what are you moaning about? You've had 50 roadshow meetings after the thing was decided. He said to MPs and unions, you've had access to negotiators after the negotiations had finished. You can't have a conversation with someone who cannot budge, who will not budge. Mr Speaker, this has been a terrible process, and here's the Minister trying to defend it by saying it's all been openness, transparency, a conversation. That's absolutely ridiculous. This has been a secret process throughout a number of years. The only way citizens, unionists, businesses, NGOs could find out information about what his team was negotiating was through WikiLeaks. That is not openness, that is not transparency, that is not a conversation that's being dictated to. Now, Mr Speaker, this is a, a bad bill which the Green Party will not be supporting. The Minister was talking about my amendment, and I want to touch on this, my amendment, a positive amendment for fair use. Now, under this legislation, we are being Just, forced... Um, order. Um, <coughs> the, um, the member's uh, SOP is out of order. It's out of scope. Um, I know you've been informed of that. Uh, so if you confine your comments, as you've already started, on other substantive matters, but your SOP is out of order, I'll be ruling it out of order when we come to have the vote, and you can't talk about it because it's out of scope of the bill. Garrett Point of order. Uh, as I say, yes, well... I just seek Garrett clarification, Hughes. sir. I'm aware of that fact. But why wasn't the Minister required on mentioning my SOP no, well, and I'm, the submissions I'm the, related well, I'm to the one, Well, he actually just commented on your uh, SOP. You're the one that's now speaking to it. Uh, and I'm telling you now that it's out of scope. There are some very small technical um, agreements that are in scope, uh, those required to implement the TPPA, but uh, your amendment seeks to extend the copyright provisions to, mirror, to uh, mirror American provisions, and I know that you've been informed that it's out of scope, and I'm telling you that I'll be ruling it out of scope when the vote comes, but I'm also saying also now uh, that you can't talk to it because it's out of scope. Gareth Hughes. Thank you, Mr Chair. So under this legislation, under the copyright provisions of part two of the TPPA bill, New Zealand is forced to enact US-style copyright rules, US-style copyright term extensions. This legislation is all about New Zealanders facing US costs with none of the US benefits that US citizens can access. A modern copyright legislation, because currently what this legislation does is keeps our 1994 Copyright Act stuck in the past, stuck in the pre-internet age where it was written uh, in the early 90s. Under this legislation, New Zealand's copyright has been moved towards the, the balance of rights holders. Everyone involved in the copyright debate in New Zealand and around the world agrees we need balance when it comes to copyright. However, what this bill does in part two is put all the balance on one side, the rights holders side. Now, when we see the impact this has on New Zealanders, I researched the impact it's going to have on New Zealand music and New Zealand literature, which would be coming out of copyright, but because this government is uh, extending terms along the US lines without none of the corresponding US benefits or protections, we're going to see some iconic New Zealand literature, such as New Zealand's first gay novel, uh, some incredibly famous music, such as the Song of the Century, Formula's Nature, stay locked out of the public domain, which means New Zealanders can't access it. We can't have a richer, creative uh, public space because it's being locked away. And this is exactly what we see in this legislation, which is all about a balance which is tilted towards one side, which is the corporate interest, not the public interest. And that's why, Mr Speaker, we should be having the conversation, if we're having US costs, why can't we have US protections? This was a key message we saw in the select committee process. And while we're criticising the process that sees us at this point, 
which was the, the secrecy, uh, only being consulted on and engaged with after nothing could change. We saw that exactly in the Select Committee process, which went through a very constrained timeline and didn't listen to the people. Now, here we are in Parliament, racing ahead, passing a law, literally on the eve before the US election, where both major candidates have said they will not be supporting this legislation. New Zealand's racing ahead. It's disappointing that we can't access those protections that other citizens can. Uh, the Green Party is going to continue to push for it because as we have the co copyright conversation, we should be talking about balance, not just cost for New Zealanders, which we know has been estimated to be in the order of $55 million a year. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.